What's up, what's up, man? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Hot Roots TV Reacts. It is I, MOE for the 713, and we're back with another video. All right, guys, before we get started with today's episode, guys, it's going to be a little bit uh, controversial, of course. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't get banned or nothing. Because I'm doing this video, bro, because kids uh, deserve a chance to be kids. You know, just let them be kids, and when they grow up, they, you know, they could be whatever they want. All right, basically. Uh, but a lot of parents, bro, a lot of parents are, are claiming that the kids... Are choosing to be boy or girl of the opposite sex of what uh, what they're really born as. Uh, basically, they're, they're choosing to be transgender at a very very young age. I mean, I'm talking about the age of two. All right, do you think a two year old knows if it's a boy or girl? It's, it's ridiculous, bro. It's, we're gonna get to that in a little bit, but they're at war right now with this this book. I think the book is called Irreversible Damage. They're doing a whole full protest. To they're trying to take away from uh, all libraries. For example, there's one protest in Ottawa, I believe. Let's watch this video real quick. An Ottawa parent is asking the Ottawa Public Library to remove a book which they say is misguided and hateful towards transgender people and has the potential to cause harm among trans youth. Elm Clemick is an Ottawa parent with four children. My six-year-old is... Uh has told us since they were age three that they're not a boy or a girl and uh and really they present themselves as you know pretty gender non-conforming Klemek is supportive they say a book at the ottawa public library has hateful and inaccurate information when it comes to trans youth sending a letter asking it to be removed from shelves as somebody who identifies with an the trans spectrum and as somebody who has a, a trans child as well it it hit close to home and um, and I was really outraged about it. The main theory in this book is that trans youth don't know themselves and, and, and can't and shouldn't be allowed to transition. The book is called Irreversible Damage, the transgender craze seducing our daughters. That our daughter... Katie Gibbs uh, is, is a mom of a trans child too. I'd like to see them remove it. I'd like for it to not be circulated anymore. The library says they have investigated the complaint and says the book won't be removed. It says it comes from a known publisher, was chosen as one of the top books of 2020 by The Economist, and there is public demand, with 30 users on a wait list for it. But I will say I think it's a book that could create a lot of harm if people weren't aware of the background. Jack Turbin is a fellow in child and adolescent psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. So the book really flies in the face of what most major medical organizations would suggest in terms of how parents should take care of their transgender kids. The library says a decision to not remove the book can be appealed. Yeah, where's the logic in that? And you see the parents, this parent right here, bro, this is exactly what I'm trying to say. As somebody who identifies with the trans spectrum and as somebody who has a, a trans child as well, it, it hit close to home and, um, and I was really outraged about it. This parent is a transgender herself, so she puts a certain agenda, bro. This is the type of people that push a certain agenda and claim that their kids at, at this very, very young age chose, they chose to become this certain gender. Has told us since they were age three that they're not a boy or a girl and, uh, and really, they present themselves as, you know, pretty gender non-conforming. Which is their own psychological illusion, bro, at the end of the day. And I don't believe it for one bit. I mean, and, and they just push and push and push. And they basically in, indoctrinate these little kids at a young age. And they have no choice, all right? Because they're kids. They're trying to look for leadership. They're trying to, they're, they're learning. They're looking at their environment. They're picking up things. And... When she just pushes this narrative, of course, you could program the human mind into believing whatever you raise it to be. Because as a young child, uh, it's a product of his environment uh, at the end of the day. You know, and the reason why they're angry at this book so much is because it kind of puts them in their place and kind of tells them that they're full of shit. So they want to ban it. And also on Amazon, they just want to ban it because ideology gets kind of destroyed and their world goes crashing down and they don't know how to take it. They can't take this type of criticism. They go on a full-fledged uh, protest to ban this book from Amazon and throughout the world. Let me see. All right. It says, uh, Amazon won't stop selling books slammed by critics as full of misinformation with potential to hurt transgender youth. How is this misinformation, bro? <laughs> and they say that it's going to hurt the transgender youth. No, who the ones who are hurting the transgender youth are the parents, bro. All right. Amazon will continue to sell controversial books slammed by critics as full of misinformation and with potential to hurt transgender youth. This is just, they claim it is a fact. 
despite an internal complaint filed by a group of employees. According to the Seattle Times last month, dozens of employees backed the complaint, arguing that the book Irreversible Damage, the company's policy against selling titles from that frame LGBTQ plus identity as mental illness. So they don't want to think that it's a mental illness. All right. They're, they're afraid of that. All right. So leaders of the company's LGBTQ uh, affinity group, Glamazon. What? I didn't even know they had a their own group. The LGBT has their own group in Amazon called Glamazon. Also urged the tech giant to stop uh, selling the book, according to Slack messages viewed by the paper. As a proud Amazonian and queer person, I invite Amazon to do the right thing and remove this book from our offerings globally, globally, an employee wrote an initial complaint. Uh, the book, written by Wall Street Journal opinion columnist Abigail Schreer uh, and released in June of 2020, suggests that transgender youth are not truly transgender, but rather just confused. So the book's central premise is that transgender youth are being rushed into gender-affirming health, which is something they will later regret, according to Turbin. You know, at the end of the day, guys, I'm still trying to figure out why they're so pissed. All this book is saying that you shouldn't just jump in and assume your kid's gender. I mean, this is very hypocritical of them uh, as a two-year-old, a three-year-old, four-year-old to just uh, think that you're, this this young baby has the knowledge to know what's really going on in the world and these issues, these mental issues that you have, the parents have. And I mean, basically this book, all I, all I could take from it is they want to warn you to not do these drastic changes on little kids because it, and later, you know, when, once they get older, the damage has already been done. It's irreversible damage. And also they're being so hypocritical because they don't want to uh, take account the countless transgender kids that have already grown up into adults that regret having this change. All right. They don't want to put that out in the, in the limelight. There's plenty of kids that have, uh, that their parents have that pushed them to do this, this change. And, Oh, you said that it, when you were five, you said you were a boy or a girl, bro. He, there were kids. They don't know what they're saying. They don't want to, they don't know. They can't even change themselves, bro. They don't, they can't feed themselves. How are you going to make this lifelong decision? And, to stick with it because of their own personal, you know, agendas. It's the parents' personal agendas, guys. And that's all it is, bro. I mean, at the end of the day, how come they don't showcase the people that regret having this, uh, this life-altering operations and and the, this stuff being done as a little kid because they didn't know any better? Just check this out. But in May, she made the decision to come off testosterone and detransition to identify as female, her sex at birth. She doesn't want to be identified, so we've changed her name. I figured it would be better for me to try to deal with my gender dysphoria in a different way rather than um, permanently changing my body. How much support did you feel was out there for you when you came to this conclusion? I didn't feel like there was any support out there other than like a few friends online. Charlie Evans is forming a charity to support people in Ruby's position. After going public with her detransition story, she discovered an online community of 5,000 in a similar position, 30 people alone in her area of Newcastle. I was approached by a young woman um, with a beard and she hugged me and, and said, I'm, I'm a detransitioned woman as well, I've just stopped taking testosterone. Um, and after that, I felt like I had to do something. I'm hearing from like, hundreds of people, um, and I think some of the common characteristics are they tend to be around their mid-twenties. Their gender identity service for children in Leeds and London now has a record number of referrals. The clinics here and in London see 3,000% more patients than they did 10 years ago. Among girls, referrals are up more than 5,000%. There's no question this service is helping children who feel distressed in their own bodies. But the full impact of children making decisions about their gender at such young ages may not truly be clear until much later in their lives. There's currently no data for how many in the trans community detransition, and to talk about it can be viewed as transphobic. But people like Ruby say more discussion is needed. Full of regret. And but they don't want to put that in the limelight. They just want to keep pushing the agenda. They want to keep putting books in the libraries like this. 
San Pedro High School has installed the nation's first all LGBTQ plus classroom library. The Pride Library opened in English and journalism teacher David Crowley's room. Students can find over 100 young adult novels, classics and histories catering to a diverse audience. Crowley is excited about the library's potential. It'll make your schools more welcoming because it's good to read about people different than yourselves. That's how we learn to accept and love each other. But anyway, we're going to talk about this next topic, which kind of has to do with the same thing. All right, this is dad. All right, this dad in the UK, supposedly that he has probably the youngest transgender or uh, son. So basically, it's a, he had a girl, and supposedly as a two-year-old, this girl claimed to be a boy. It's weird, bro. It's weird. So I, we're just going to go inside the minds of these these parents to see what what they think and why they push these type of agendas. Let, let's just go see. Let's see the the rationale. The, let's see what the reasoning. All right. Let's see if we could understand the reason why they claim that uh, they could just let these little babies confirm that they're of the opposite sex of which where they were born. All right. Supposedly, the, these little babies communicated with them and told them, "Oh, I'm a boy." Dad, I'm not a, I'm not a girl, as a young as two year old. It's a baby, bro. What? Uh, let's read this article, bro. Let's see uh, the logic. All right, so let's see what this dad had to say. Uh, a proud dad of a trans four year old shares journey to embracing his son's gender. His son's gender. All right. All right. So this is what they said. They noticed Stormy was showing signs he was unhappy with the gender he'd been assigned at the age of eighteen months. How much is 18 months, bro? That's like a year and a half, a one-year-old. All right. Stormy had been, uh, this is not the person, by the way. <laughs> Stormy would have been two just before when we first noticed. All right. Stubby said, according to the Daily Mirror, um, we did the things that people do. Dress his brother in a boy clothes and gave Stormy pigtails. All right. Supposedly, they tried to make it a girl at first. Soon afterwards, Stormy started to become upset. Uh, wearing dresses and it got to the point where he wasn't happy unless he was wearing stereotypical boy clothes all right so they want to make sure that it's a he but it's a she so it wasn't happy until he was wearing boy clothes i mean it's a baby bro they just want to be comfortable uh when he was two and a half stormy told his parents for the first time that he was actually a boy and not a girl as they had previously believed what the fuck <laughs> okay over the following months, Stormy repeatedly told his parents that he was a boy, a two-year-old, bro. By the time he turned three, they decided to accept his gender identity and embrace him for who he really is. <laughs> How? A baby's not just going to say that by himself. Like the baby knows what a boy and a girl is. Yeah. Transgender child Stormy is a bright, happy boy who loves his life. Three-year-old. Two-year-old. What? Around his third birthday, the couple had a conversation with Stormy. They had a conversation with a three-year-old where they asked him, Are you just not a girl? Are you a boy? Their son was clear that he was a boy. Although he has since suggested on occasion that he might be non-binary. Fuck. What? This much... Uh, Bro, these aren't parents, bro. These are some sick people in the head. Uh, some kids like to be dinosaurs. Some people are trains. Uh, this is weird, bro. While Stubbings and his wife love and support Stormy unconditionally, they have had issues with other adults who have dismissed and degenerated their son's identity. Bro, uh, all of Stormy's friends know that he is a boy, but adults have on many occasions insisted on calling him a girl. Stubbings revealed, oh, what a, what a crime. Bro, these parents should not be parents, bro. How are you gonna? How's your kid gonna teach you about his jet? What is going on? Uh, Matthew Stubbins first opened up about his son's amazing journey in a post in LinkedIn, uh, telling followers that Stormy is a bright, happy boy who loves his life. In the post, Stubbins said many people aren't aware that Stormy was a sex as a girl when he was born. He he says, "I am so proud that he knows." who he is and isn't constrained by social norms and prejudice and prejudices Stubbings wrote a, a three-year-old bro he knows this much he knows all this he he got life all figured out he knows who he is at, at this point i'm convinced that these parents there they have some so some sort of a mental disability bro 
They don't think they think that little babies are full grown adults and they could, you know, they're they know what they could comprehend what the world is and what's going on in the world. They are sick in the head, bro. Uh, he also says we can all learn something from this small boy. And I learn every day. Everyone is different. We all need to accept that people are different and not try to force those around us to fit into a box that suits us. It's a baby, a baby. Three year old, he's still peeing his pants. Oh man, or her pants. He added, accepting people for who they are is the only way to encourage innovation, embrace growth, and harness the best in everyone. Obviously, this fool had an agenda this whole time. This is not how you parent your kids, bro. I mean, how in the world are three year olds, two year olds gonna know what this is? They don't. They're laws, bro. They, they want guidance. And these parents, they're they're dangerous, bro. I mean, these parents have some screws loose in the head, bro. They, they think that a two-year-old, a three-year-old know what, who they are or what, boy, what boy is or a girl. They don't even know what their pee-pee is. They don't even know what's downstairs. They don't give these kids a chance, bro. This is child abuse, bro. This is straight-up child abuse, if you ask me, bro. They want to pretend like these kids are already adults and they can make their own decisions. And I'm telling you guys, bro, I mean, there's plenty of people on my channel that are gay and they... Uh, they know what's up, bro. They, they know that they, they should just leave kids alone and let them be kids. But, I mean, these transgenders, they, they got no boundaries, bro. I mean, to show you another example how they have, they have no boundaries, I don't know if y'all seen this video before. Uh, it just recently happened. I just had never reacted to it. But they got little little boys dressed as drag queens at a nightclub, at a Miami gay nightclub, while people are throwing money at them like strippers, bro. It's just sick. Children in a fucking drag show in LA on the beach. Look at this shit. USA! USA! Look at this bullshit now. Look, look, they giving them fucking money, yo. Little girls now. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. And fucking throwing money at these little girls. Got them picking up fucking money off the floor like they fucking strippers and shit now. But no, they won't go after these people. They think, oh, that's all right. That's all right. This is how twisted reality has gone, bro. I mean, the psychological manipulation that these parents use on these kids while they're young and not letting them and just push these certain agenda is just ridiculous, bro. It's just disgusting. But anyway, leave your comments down below. Let me know what y'all think about everything y'all seen today and I discussed. And uh, I will be posting a live soon on my main channel. Just try to keep pushing forward for you guys. But anyway, thank you for watching. It is I am Wii 713. I'm gonna see y'all on the next episode. Bam!